So against internet commenter advice, I decided to GC my own house, right? I think it came out pretty well, but check out the journey, learn how to build a house yourself, and don't be too afraid to try something you're uncomfortable with. All right, on site, it's almost nine o'clock and our trucks with the concrete are gonna be here at nine o'clock. This is the pump truck as we had when we did the footers, but we're waiting on the concrete trucks. They're spaced out every seven minutes, which means every, the whole purpose is to get everything to sort of dry uniformly and not harden before the other concrete gets here so it's all nice and even. Um, we've got, you see right now they've got that air canister spraying over and we're using those green top buckets those green top buckets are like a uh, like a lubricant it's a releasing agent so that the concrete doesn't stick to the forms so it's easy to peel off when we did these footers you could see it was just wood and you could just whack those with a hammer it comes right off with these forms they coat the inside so that the concrete doesn't dry to it as it hardens. So we should see the trucks pulling up any minute here. And this thing is just so fun. I love it. This could be the last time I need the concrete truck. The basement obviously, as I've said before, gets done separately. Uh, but when the basement gets done, we could just shoot straight from the truck right down into the basement. And it'll be backfilled by that point in time so you can get a lot closer to the house and pour the basement and then we just rake it in but let's uh stand by for the trucks they should be pulling up any minute and we'll get this thing going i'm excited we are in business i got some concrete finally um let's see what we got as far as weather goes Forty-eight degrees. Uh, it took a little longer. It was supposed to be here. I thought 9 a.m. It's actually almost noon now. But we got them on site. We'll start getting some concrete coming down. Start filling these forms. Now we've got these trucks about seven or eight minutes apart. We should eat up about uh, 60 yards real quick. Make it rain. Again, come all the way up there. And it's gonna be coming out. Right over there. So shoot a little bit on the dirt. Just clean, make sure we get good even flow. concrete. Alright, bring it on in. Boom is controlled by this joystick here. So you can control that, shuffle it around, and these guys will use hand signals to tell them where to move it, when to move it, but obviously going 12 inches thick and whatever 10 or 11 feet up, it's going to use a lot of concrete and it spread, naturally disperses around underneath. Comes truck number two. As I said, they're gonna stack up. This truck will empty out, and then it'll pull over there, start cleaning off to go back and load up again. Same size truck, about 10 yards in each. It's all 10 yarders. So there's a, uh, a concrete place in Blauvelt, New York, which is where this is coming from, which is Salmon. Uh, last time we had Eastern, this time we had Salmon. Doesn't really make a difference. Same thing, uh, 3,500 PSI at 28 days. The rating on this, 
and they're over there. I mean, as we're doing this, they're filling trucks, uh, usually probably three, four, five trucks, cycling it out. Right now, I think we scheduled 80 yards. We're probably gonna need about 120. And uh, as we know, and as we get closer, we'll call them up, update it, and they'll start prepping the other trucks uh, until we say we do not need any more concrete. And that's how they get the job done. And obviously, the, the reason those barrels spin is so the concrete doesn't settle and dry out because that would be a problem. Here comes my other truck. And as this one's going, the other guy's probably gonna back out after he rinses out. Going through about, I don't wanna say, about $17,000 worth of, no, uh, probably about $12,000 worth of concrete today. Concrete, if you're wondering, should cost, and I, and I know I paid a little bit more than I should have, should cost about $170 a yard poured. So it's $100 a yard roughly for the concrete and about $70 a yard for these guys to set up frames and do all that. I'm out the door probably $240 a yard for my project, so there is money that could have been saved there. But, uh, you know, you live and you learn. That beeping, when you hear that, that, that's the pump truck beeping. That's him controlling it. The beeping means there's gonna be concrete coming or concrete stopping. And we should have another truck. As I said, every 10 minutes or eight minutes, there should be another truck uh, inbound very shortly. There we go. As I said, there's my third truck. These guys are just stacking up right there. Anything for the shot. Anything for the shot. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Coming all the way around. He's shooting over there. Those are little breather holes, it looks like. They punch some holes in the wall just to let some, uh, some air escape. Right, here's truck number seven. And as you can see, we are starting to crown off on some of the sides. So we'll see. There's a measuring stick that's going off of that box right there to make sure it's the right height straight across. Let's see if we can get a look straight down the top of the wall. That's the finish tight. All right, you'll also notice these little pins sticking up, these little screws as they go around. I'll show you those over here. Oh, here they are right here. These harden into the concrete and you put the sill plate on, which is what the framing sits on. So you're gonna take that, it's gonna be sticking up out of this. As it hardens, it allows the uh, wooden structure to be secured to the house obviously as best you can and you can see as you're going down i just place those in he uses a t the rough smooth he uses that to smooth it and then he just drops those pins um, right in there's our truck number nine this is the last truck we got it's 90 yards um, I hope that is sufficient. I was thinking it's going to be like 110. And if I am wrong, nothing would make me happier. Not that it saves me any money, but it saves somebody money, and that's just as good. All right, now we clean up the pump truck. Start spraying down. This is what they do for all of them. So you got a little pile of concrete over here. They just spray down the chute. 
so you don't build up a layer of concrete. And there's still some left in there. So our total concrete, I would say, was probably between 85 and 87 uh, cubic yards of concrete for this. As I said, I thought it was going to be about 110. I'm wrong. I was just going off of estimates people gave me when they were pricing it out. I didn't actually do the, the math. But uh, we also didn't know what the final height was. When we were doing the final height initially, the walls were going to be 10 foot 4 inches tall in the front. That would have put the back walls up to like uh, a little over 12 feet. So we obviously didn't go up that high. But now this is pretty cool. They're going to be, while well, they finish up over there, I was like, how do you clean that, right? Like, how do you clean it? Well, you suck a sponge through it. Because it is a pump, so uh, you're going to clog it up and suck it through and it'll clean the whole dang thing. Let's watch. I think it's somewhere about there right now. Getting sucked up to the top. All right, oh, there it is. These all look like very important warnings. So now that it's filled with concrete, I think we are in much better shape. Probably start stripping the forms tomorrow late afternoon. Um, gives it a full day. It's not gonna freeze tonight. We don't have anything to worry about there which we're lucky about in the beginning of January. But just doing final checks while the concrete is still plenty pliable. I'm sure they'll do one final walk around, get little pieces off like over here. We have little chunks. Put those chip off anyway at some point. These guys are crazy. But other than that, I think we're looking pretty solid. The anchor bolts going all the way around for the sill plate. I think they're supposed to be spaced about two feet apart and then in each corner. So that's about what you're looking at, maybe 36 inches. It looks like 36 inches to me. But that is what's going to hold the framing to the house. We'll show you that a little bit more as we get closer to framing, which is going to be next week. And I'm excited. Big step. When these forms come off, we'll actually see what the interior space is going to look like, albeit probably impossible for me to get over that wall once they strip these things down. I'm not going to climb over on a ladder. All right, another cold day. Uh, this is the day after the basement walls were poured. And you can see uh, they've already been here stripping it off. And I mean, it's pretty much stripped down. So that didn't take very long. Obviously this is not gonna be an incredibly long video because there's not much to show. Uh, they pull off all these forms. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. I guess they'll just have to climb in and pass all these through, but the exterior ones are all off. And now you'll start to see the finished basement. And you see all the tabs here. They step in everything. They got a couple more walls over here. They may have just stepped out for lunch. Uh, you'll see the tabs. These all have to get broken off. But here's a nice finished wall. This shows you the, uh, I mean, this is all, most of this is gonna be below grade here. We're at about finished grade right here in the front. So um, there will be plenty of coverage above ground. The grade slopes higher in the back, which is why we have that reverse brick shelf. It takes 28 days for these to harden, but obviously the very next day um, you can get to the point where we're at, where they hold their form. It can, you can start stripping them. It didn't rain uh, after the pour. It did rain a little later last night, but 
as you can see and you could see the two different pours that was the first pour on the bottom and the second pour when they did the second round on the top uh, the rain doesn't affect it uh, we can't pour in the rain because it dilutes the mix but it was a couple hours later, at least like eight or ten hours later that it started to rain and that didn't impact any of it but we'll be doing the waterproofing figure in two or three days uh, we'll get to the waterproofing of the basement and uh, anything that's below grade that's pretty important we got these footers poured there are your walls all right stay tuned i'll be back when these guys wrap it up obviously you don't need to see them strip this thing down it's pretty easy but i shall be back in a little bit gonna go run some errands and this will be wrapped up and we'll be ready for waterproofing pretty soon stay tuned all right not gonna be any way to fudge this one as if i just stepped out for coffee there's snow on the ground uh so i stepped out for a minute slash i went to iceland for the weekend and i guess i sent the snow here but we're back uh, obviously most of the work is now done here um you'll see all the tabs now are broken off for the height of the basement that's about and it's about as high as i can reach and that's going to be sort of finished height of basement ceiling you see here with these tabs you just whack them off with a hammer um here you can see my two pass-through pipes let's see you can look right into the basement uh these two pipes here are clearly below grade uh below the freezing line below the frost line so these are for uh, both the uh, gas and water and we'll pass those through you can the electric will go over the concrete that's why that doesn't need it and uh, same with the internet maybe we can sneak another hole if need be the only other uh pipe that we would need is a sewage pipe uh, which would have been larger something similar to that we didn't end up putting that in because we figure we're gonna end up i mean it depends where the septic finally ends up uh it doesn't make sense to move it or to rejigger it we could just punch a hole in the wall and the guy's doing the septic didn't mind punching a hole in the wall you could see obviously these are the anchor bolts as i said that the framing will connect to the wood that will be called the sill plate we'll go through these as we do it um and then here is the escape window which is why it's lower uh this is going to be uh, for basement escape say there's a fire or something in the house it's not code that i need it because there's no bedroom down there but i figure since people may be living not living but like they may be playing down there doing anything down there it's a social space say god forbid there's a fire it, by the steps or something like that i i don't want people to be trapped in the basement i want there to be a way out so that's where that's going to come in there you go uh everything is done here we're waiting for the waterproofing it's a little cold today but i think we're scheduling that for tomorrow or thursday inspection shall be done on friday and then we can start the backfill and all these dirt piles disappear we start replacing the dirt piles with wood and when the wood replaces it we'll start framing it up and then you'll start seeing what looks like a house stay tuned we'll be back shortly or actually just like right now here's your next video thanks for watching all right another day and next step is up you'll hear the generator let me see if i can sort of get my way around it but we're waterproofing now and you'll see we sprayed let me get away from these generators we sprayed the uh this is like a tar that goes on it you can see as it runs down uh we fill in the if there's any like imperfections or anything they fill it with a uh i don't want to say epoxy it's not an epoxy it's like a, a filler so that there's no holes and then they can even thing and even coating on it we've sprayed this for the line the approximate line as to where the um, waterproofing is going to be and you can see it works its way up towards the back here 
Look at the sound deadening. You can't even really hear that stuff from this side. Um, and as you can see, the property gets steeper as we go back. We've covered that already. So the line goes higher and higher as to where we're waterproofing. So the waterproofing, it's just a tar. There's a, uh, a drain board you can put on or a, dra uh, a permeable mat. Uh, we're not doing that. It's, it's something that, that it's 12 inch thick concrete and it's gonna have like a quarter inch of, of rubber essentially on it. Uh, no water's getting through that. It's also a very dry area. The basement's been dry forever. Um, it's just not a, a wet area that would require for that drain board but we'll check it out. You can see here the application process. And you can see he's decked from head to toe and that's probably not very good to breathe in. like as you get close straight down to the footer gross right as you can see it gets taller over here so that's what it's going to ultimately look like all right so we don't have to watch him spray too much we'll be back in a little bit you'll see this thing wrapped up and i can call in for the inspection what's up everybody welcome back uh, we are now doing some backfill and as I said, we did the waterproofing. You saw that these columns here uh, The piers they haven't been poured yet So they're gonna frame these out and pour them So we're gonna backfill the rest of the way because they need this big machine on a pretty big job They've got two of these machines going to a big job coming up So this was able to get the work done quicker and then they'll bring a smaller machine just to do the front but you can see here Obviously the pins, chalk lines, all marked off. So these are gonna be where they're supposed to be. Uh, since they didn't uh, put the rebar in it when we started, they just drilled holes, put the rebar down in there. And these piers are gonna go up about two inches, well, actually not about, two inches above finished grade up there. So we'll have these two inches above, not finished grade, uh, fit top of wall. Uh, and then we'll have a, the framing for the deck is gonna go right on top of it. So that'll be done by Friday, but I didn't want to hold up the process when we could start playing and moving some dirt. And here you can see the backfill scooping this dirt back in. And we'll see just how much extra dirt we have left. I mean, you look at some jobs and be like, that looks like a lot of fun. This is probably a lot of fun, but it is ultimately, after you do it long enough, becomes a job. Uh, they're just putting it up roughly to the top of the wall now and they'll start measuring beyond that uh, to get the finish grade right it'll be nice to walk right up to the house now and take a peek in all right we're not at finished grade yet because we're moving dirt but here you can see uh, where those are going to be uh, help we're holding off on the backfill there that'll be a good chunk of that dirt in the front Come over here and you can see how we filled in these big holes uh, for under the patios. And you can see we're wrapping up back here. But you'll see I can now effectively walk around the entire house. Walk right up to it. And again, we'll, we'll clean this up. But it gives you a much better visualization when you can actually stand over it as to what everything is going to look like. So that majestic machine up there sitting 
peacefully means we're done for the day. Uh, next step, as I said, is to get these frames, there's some of them over here, but get these framed up, get the concrete poured. Then once these piers are done, that just takes a day to dry, probably the following day or the next day, uh, we'll be able to come in and finish that off by filling in the rest of the dirt so that the finished backfill will look like this. I mean, it's just gonna be sort of loose dirt against the, the foundation going all the way around. And the only other thing we have to do is while we're pouring those, we'll pour the hunch slabs, which are gonna be underneath there, underneath there, and one in the back here. That's just for structural support. Uh, that's something that I, I brought it up a couple of times during the initial uh, footer pour, but I think we had a slight language barrier and, and that didn't get across. They said they would do it later when they do the basement, but I can't start doing anything with the basement until after, or we can't do anything structurally framing wise until those are in. So uh, we'll finish this up tomorrow, hopefully get everything done, and we'll start framing next week. A little bit more of a delay than I was expecting, um, but you know what, that's, that's to be expected. I, I like to be optimistic, and when challenges come up, I'll just describe them to you. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Thank you.